uh, in this video we discuss uh, theorem 5.18 ms maximal if and only if g by uh, m is simple so first we assume that m is maximal suppose that m is maximal uh, so we need to prove that uh, g over m is simple uh, g over m is simple means g over m has only two uh, normal subgroups the first one is trivial normal subgroup that is single transit identity uh, the identity in this g over m is uh, m itself because m is the identity of g over m and uh, the other normal subgroup is g over m itself so we need to prove that or uh, we have to show that uh, g over m has only two normal subgroups normal subgroups say what are they first one is em identity and g over m itself these are the only subgroups this is we want to prove so we assume that there are another normal subgroup other than single transit this uh, say this is not equal to this is a proper uh, non trivial subgroup n prime and this also proper so this is not equal to g over m so uh, if we have this uh, otherwise you can assume that uh, in order to prove g over m is simple uh, we assume that uh, n prime is a normal subgroup satisfying the condition uh, e over m e em less than uh, em is a subgroup of n prime so which is a subgroup of g over m uh, then if we assume such a normal subgroup for g over m uh, we will show that uh, singleton set em uh, is equal to n prime uh, or uh, n prime is equal to g over m then uh, still you can say that this is uh, the definition of the symbol group or uh, g over m symbol so we need to prove that uh, uh, such a, n, a normal subgroup n prime does not exist so we start with this suppose there is n prime and we will show that uh, this n prime is uh, either trivial subgroup trivial normal subgroup or the whole group itself uh, for that we consider the homomorphism gamma from uh, g into g onto g over m okay gamma is a map uh, gamma is the canonical homomorphism gamma g is equal to gm this is already discussed previously uh, since this gamma is a homomorphism from g to uh, g over m we uh, uh, last in the last video we have discussed a theorem uh, phi is a homomorphism from g to g of g prime then uh, the image of no, normal subgroup of g is again normal subgroup of phi of g subgroup of phi of g uh, in a similar fashion if i inverse of uh, any normal subgroup n prime of g uh, phi of g uh, again this is normal subgroup of g Okay. so if you start with the normal subgroup of g then image set is always a normal subgroup if you start with the normal subgroup of g prime then inverse image is, is again a normal subgroup of g inverse image is always a subset of uh, the domain group okay so if we apply that theorem for this gamma uh, we can say that if you uh, consider any uh, normal subgroup n prime in between em uh, less than or equal to n prime less than or equal to g over m this less than or equal stands for the subgroup uh, then you consider so we have a g here and we have g over m here and we start with a normal subgroup n prime in g over m okay so this is a normal subgroup this is normal subgroup then consider set of all inverse images of this n prime under this gamma so this uh, this set is nothing but gamma inverse of n prime okay so if n prime is a normal subgroup of g over m then gamma inverse n is a normal subgroup of g 
so obviously gamma inverse of n prime is a normal subgroup of uh, g okay uh, obviously this is uh, since this is a normal subgroup then this is less than or equal to uh, singleton set e that means uh, this is a uh, normal non trivial normal subgroup of or uh, this normal subgroup lies in between singleton set e um, and g okay so what is the advantage of uh, what is the uh, characteristic of this n prime okay so gamma inverse of n prime this consists of set of all g belongs to g such that gamma g belongs to n prime okay so this is the definition of gamma inverse of n prime okay that is gamma inverse of n prime collects all the elements of g which are mapped uh, to some element of uh, n prime okay so since this n prime is a uh, subgroup of uh, g over m uh, or this uh, if you consider any m belongs to capital m then we have uh, what is the coset containing m coset containing uh, m is m m okay so if you choose any m belongs to m m m this is equal to em because if you multiply uh, if you operate elements of m uh, with small m then you will get end up with the same m okay so this is the identity obviously this is an element of n prime okay because n prime is a normal subgroup of g over m so n prime contains identity of g over m so this is the identity of g over m so this is contained in n prime so in particular m m contained in n prime okay so this shows that every element uh, m of m uh, is mapped to uh, em okay under this gamma because gamma m is equal to em itself so this em is always an element of n prime so if you collect gamma inverse of n prime uh, every since every image of every element of m in capital m is in n prime <coughs> this contains every element of m okay so we can obviously say that what is the conclusion of this statement this means m is m belongs to m implies uh, e m belongs to or m m m m which is equal to e m belongs to n prime okay this implies gamma m belongs to n prime this shows that whenever gamma m belongs to n prime then m is a member of gamma inverse of n prime yeah. so every element of m is a member of gamma inverse of n prime so this is uh, this e is obviously is a member of this uh, this e is always contained in this subgroup uh, not only that we have uh, this gamma inverse of n prime also contains every element of m okay so we can write this is m is always contained in this okay our assumption is this m is a maximal subgroup of uh, g we started with that okay assuming that m is a maximal subgroup of g then uh, we now we got a, a normal subgroup of g uh, which contain contains m and which is contained in g since this m is maximal then this gamma inverse uh, n prime has only two possibilities either this will be capital m itself or gamma inverse of n prime is equal to g okay that means gamma inverse of n prime what is the consequences of this th th these two conditions okay so if you start with any uh, maximal normal subgroup then uh, we have a gamma so using this gamma we can map every normal subgroup n prime of g by m g over m uh, to a normal subgroup of g that lies in between m and g okay since m is maximal then one of these conditions occur okay so what is the meaning of this gamma inverse of n prime uh, equal to m means gamma inverse of n prime contains only the elements of m okay so uh, we know that for any m 
gamma m belongs to n prime okay but gamma m is always em okay so this implies this m is equal to n prime is equal to n prime contains only the images of elements of m that is the meaning of this okay. gamma inverse of n prime equal to m means uh, this n prime contains only the images of elements of m that means n prime will be uh, only em okay the singleton set so if this happens we will have n prime is only em if this happens gamma inverse of n prime equal to g okay this means this n prime is gamma of g what is gamma of g since gamma is on to gamma of g is g over m itself so if you start with a normal subgroup n prime uh, which lies in between uh, em singleton set em that is identity and g over m then we can conclude that that n prime is either that singleton set em or that n prime is g over m itself that means uh, this uh, g over m has only two normal subgroups if if you assume any normal subgroup n prime then n prime is either this em or uh, n prime is g over m okay so which shows that uh, g over m has only two subgroup consequently g over m is simple okay, so this is the uh, first case uh, next we have to uh, assume g over m is simple now suppose that suppose that g over m is simple to prove m is maximum okay. g over m is simple so we need to prove that m is maximal okay in order to prove m is maximal we assume a normal subgroup n in between uh, m and g and we will prove that either n is equal to m or n is equal to g then we can say that uh, m is maximal okay so if this happens then you consider uh, gamma n obviously gamma n is a norm since n is a normal subgroup of g then gamma n is a normal subgroup of g over m so this uh, this is always a normal subgroup of g over m okay o obviously if if it since m is uh, what is the consequence of this m is a normal subgroup of m is a maximal normal subgroup of uh, g uh, contained in n then this implies that gamma of m okay is less than or equal to gamma of n okay so if you consider all the elements of m and find, find uh, observe the images of that those uh, quantities that is always contained in gamma of n because n, n, m is contained in n okay so uh, otherwise you can say that this from this statement itself uh, since gamma n is a normal subgroup we have the trivial subgroup this is always a uh, subgroup of every subgroup of g over m so this is contained in uh, gamma of n and which is contained in g over m so every normal subgroup in between m and g we have gamma of n is a normal subgroup in between uh, this trivial normal subgroup and g over m but our assumption is g over m is simple okay then what is the consequence of this g over m is simple means uh, this uh, singleton set em is nothing but gamma of n either uh, this is equal to gamma of n or we have gamma of n equal to g over m okay so since g over m is symbol so uh, uh, being symbol g over m has only uh, two uh, subgroups normal subgroups either uh, this is normal subgroup or this so since this n is a normal then gamma of we know that gamma of n is normal so this gamma of n should coincide with one of these uh, normal subgroups that is uh, gamma of n is equal to either single set tm or gamma of n is equal to g over m okay so what is the consequence of gamma of n equal to e okay so every element of n is mapped to identity okay that means uh, single ten set em is same as gamma of n gamma of n is mapped what is gamma of n gamma of n is at the fall uh, n uh, cosets of set of all cosets of elements of n okay so we need to consider set of all uh, n m such that n belongs to n. okay so this set is same as uh, em 
okay this is a singleton set that is the meaning of this equality gamma of n equal to m gamma of n means set of all images of elements of n so images gamma uh, gamma is defined as gamma g is equal to gm okay so what is gamma n that is nm for all n belongs to n so this is singleton set em means uh, em equal to nm for all n belongs to n okay what is the meaning of this em is equal to nm that means n is a member of m itself for all n belongs to n so every element of n we have n is a member of m itself okay so uh, we know that n is contained in n is contained in m but uh, we started with this right m is less m is a sub uh, subgroup of n from this we can get n is contained in m so this implies uh, from this uh, assumption we will get m is equal to n along with this one uh, now what is the image what is the meaning of or uh, this happens gamma of n is equal to g over m uh, gamma of n is equal to uh, g over m means uh, uh, since this gamma of n is what is gamma of n gamma of n is again set of all n m such that n belongs to n okay so this is equal to g over m means this gives all the left cosets of m okay because g over m consists of set of all distinct left cosets okay so in uh, since this gamma uh, is on to then this means uh, this gamma of n this n is itself g okay then this is on to then uh, gamma actually gamma g is gamma g is uh, g over m because this gamma is on to so this uh, g over m can be written as gamma of g okay now gamma of g capital g so gamma of capital g is equal to uh, this that means uh, it is enough to consider n to get all the distinct uh, cosets okay so from this gamma of g gives set of all distinct cosets so in order to get the distinct cosets of m we need to consider all the elements of g okay so g m g over m is coincides with this means uh, that n coincides with g okay so uh, if we start with n in between m and g we can say that either m equal to n or that n equal to g that means there is no other subgroup in between normal subgroup in between m and g which shows that m is the maximal normal subgroup m is maximal normal subgroup okay. so this proves theorem 15.18 now we discuss two important subgroups of a group uh, the first one is a center of group center of the group center of the group is uh, defi uh, defined as uh, z of g which is equal to let's collect all the elements of uh, g uh, such that uh, g commutes with every element so i, I put it as z of all z belongs to g okay. so z of all z belongs to g so what is the what is the property of this set the z should uh, commute with every element of g okay. g z equal to z g for all g belongs to g we collect all those z okay. so obviously this set is not empty this is not empty set because e e commutes with every element e g is equal to g e for all g so obviously e is a member of center of g center of the group so this is a uh, we collect all such elements uh, so center of the uh, group uh, is always a subgroup of uh, group uh, this is always a subgroup of g uh, because if we collect any z1 z2 uh, z1 comma z2 belongs to center of g then obviously uh, uh, these are elements of center of g means z1 and z2 commute with every element of the group okay so we have g z1 equal to uh, z1 g and g z2 equal to z2 g for all g belongs to g so this is the definition of z of g uh, then you can obviously uh, see this g z1 z2 is commutative with every element uh, because this g z1 z2 g z1 z2 is g z1 can be written as z1 g because z1 commutative with every element so you can uh, just uh, interchange these two 
and we know that g z2 is same as z2 g so z1 this g z2 can be written as z2 g so this is true for every g then uh, we can say that z1 z2 commutes with every element so z1 z2 belongs to center center of the group uh, that means uh, this z of g has closure property so basically since this, uh, this is a subset of uh, the group g then it all the elements of this has uh, associative property uh, now we think of e obviously e is a member of uh, center of g uh, then uh, if we choose any z belongs to center of g uh, then uh, we have uh, g z equal to z g right this is true for all g uh, if you uh, transpose z to the right this z to the right and this z to the left then what happen that means pre multiply and post multiply by z inverse so that will be z inverse g equal to when multiply z inverse from the left and right also so the right hand the right hand side of the g z the z will uh, collapse to identity so this is z inverse g is equal to uh, g z inverse okay uh, this is because by multiplying z inverse on the uh, pre multiply and post multiply by z inverse okay this is what we have uh, done here so this will be identity so left side will be z inverse g uh, this will be identity then the right side will be g z inverse this is true for every g so what does it show uh, this shows that um, z inverse commutes with every element so z inverse is a, also a member of center of g so for every z belongs to center of g then z inverse is also a member of center of g which shows that center of g is a subgroup okay then you can easily find out uh, subgroups uh, z of g uh, equal to g for all or if and only if g is an abelian group g is an abelian group uh, in an abelian group every element commits with every element okay so uh, center of g in center of g there will be all the elements of g itself okay so, uh, so in order to get center of g uh, not equal to g uh, we start with uh, g is non abelian okay only non abelian group we can distinguish that center of g and g uh, g is non For example, center of you can easily verify that center of uh, is at three. Sorry, S three. Okay, this is singleton set pro naught. This is a simple observation. Uh, we know that S three contains only six elements. So uh, the only element which commutes with every element of the group is a row naught identity. So it is trivial. Center of set uh, three is center of uh, s3 is trivial so this is the example given in section 14 uh, 15 point uh, 19 okay now we move on to uh, commutator subgroup uh, that is theorem uh, 15 point 20 uh, in this theorem uh, it uh, states that this is the theorem this theorem states that uh, if you have a commutator subgroup uh, say C uh, what is a commutator subgroup uh, we collect all commutators first set of all S equal to A B A inverse B inverse where A comma B belongs to G we collect all this set the set this is a subset of G uh, need not be a subgroup uh, we collect this S then uh, the sub the subgroup of G generated by S subgroup of G uh, generated by S elements of S generated by S is called commutator subgroup. This is the definition is called commutator subgroup. Already given. Uh, that means C consists of set of all uh, products of uh, powers of elements of S. That is. C, we did not this as C. Uh, first of all, we have to prove that C is a normal subgroup. Uh, obviously, C is since C is a subgroup generated by this, then C is a subgroup. Then we can uh, prove that uh, C is uh, normal subgroup. How will you prove that C is normal subgroup? So we know that if uh, if you take any element uh, H belongs to C, then we need to prove that G inverse or G H 
g inverse belongs to c for all g belongs to g this is the definition of for any h belongs to c g h g inverse belongs to c for all g this is the definition of normality okay we not we need to prove that c has this property okay uh, obviously if h belongs to c means uh, h is a uh, product of powers of or product of commutators anyway c1 c2 etc some ck uh, this c1 c2 and uh, uh, this uh, ci is a, ci is need not be distinct okay so any h from c h, c is generated by these elements so uh, any element of c uh, is a product of commutators so how will you prove that uh, g h g inverse a member of c itself so in order to prove you have to evaluate this uh, how will you evaluate this g c1 c2 etc ck g inverse but this can be written as g c1 g inverse g c2 g inverse g etc 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 uh, g inverse g ck g okay so the this is obtained by inserting uh, e uh, in the every space in between ci's okay so here we put e and the next uh, uh, in between c2 and c3 we put e and each e can be replaced by g inverse g okay then you can get this one so uh, actually this is so if you consider any g h g inverse we need to prove that this is a member of c we need to prove that this we didn't prove that uh, we need to prove this one so in order to prove this is an element of g we need to prove that this is an element of g uh, this is an element of c and this is an element of c okay so for each commutator uh, we need to prove that g uh, the commutator c1 g inverse is again a commutator okay is ag again a member of c okay so in order to prove this is an element of c we need to prove that each of this uh, g c g inverse uh, is an element of g okay so we start with a commutator uh, instead of taking product of commutators we start with a single commutator uh, let c equal to a b a inverse b inverse clear now uh, we need to consider g e g c g inverse okay. what is g c g inverse uh, that is g a uh, we write g first then g a b a inverse b inverse g inverse okay so uh, if you start with a uh, commutator then uh, that commutator uh, we need to consider g inverse uh, commutator then g okay or the other way you can prove that g uh, uh, g c g instead of taking g c g inverse we need to consider g inverse uh, c g also okay now you think of uh, how will you write this as a product of commutators this is the uh, problem here now you write this uh, g uh, a b okay so uh, here we have a inverse okay so we write uh, a inverse here then i insert an element uh, I, i'll uh, put some space here uh, i uh, insert g inverse okay we uh, uh, write g inverse then uh, i write uh, b in b then g sorry then b inverse then g i can put this element in between g a uh, b a inverse and b inverse g inverse so i put an element this is the effect of this is e right b b inverse is e g inverse g is again e so this is e so i inserted e in between these two quantities okay so that will give the same thing uh, but uh, what is the advantage of this but advantage of this is by associating the last four elements so that will be uh, b inverse uh, g uh, then uh, we, we write this is uh, 
we can put it in the other way uh, b uh, let it be inverse g and finally we have I'll put it in the other way uh, that is uh, instead of writing B B inverse I write uh, B inverse B that is we have to uh, get this is uh, B inverse B okay now you compare uh, these things last four things that is uh, this is the last one uh, B inverse G inverse and previous two element will be b g okay so this is these four elements okay now what is what is the remaining g a b okay this a inverse g inverse what is a inverse g inverse a inverse g inverse is g a whole inverse right g a whole inverse is inverse of a then inverse of g because g a and this when we operate these two quantities we will get identity so actually we write this element okay a inverse g inverse as g a inverse so we observe the other uh, quantities other uh, there are six elements g a b uh, a inverse g inverse b inverse uh, we consider first two element as one entity then consider that is g a this is a one entity then write b then the other uh, two elements a inverse g inverse that can be written as g a inverse okay g a inverse the remaining will be b inverse so we, if we consider these elements up to b inverse that is a commutator that is this is c and this is uh, d and this is c inverse and this is d inverse okay actually this is a commutator again the last two four is again commutator b g b inverse g inverse so obviously this is a product of two commutators then this is an element of c so if you start with any commutator c that is a b a inverse b inverse then g c g inverse belongs to c the similar way if you start with a commutator c uh, d c inverse d inverse then multiply it with uh, g inverse g okay again this by inserting uh, proper elements you can prove that this is a member of c itself okay that is g inverse uh, c d uh, then c inverse uh, g uh, then you can write uh, what else uh, c d c inverse d inverse by uh, properly uh, putting entities this is inverse, c inverse actually this is c g whole inverse okay, write it as c g inverse g, c, g inverse c so I will put it as by putting properly uh, elements uh, in in between the elements of this G, we can prove that this is a member of C itself. So in the in in any way G C G inverse or G inverse C G, uh, this is our commutator G inverse commutator uh, G is a member of C. So which shows that these elements, if you have uh, since H is a, an arbitrary element of the commutator group, then these each of these elements g commutator g inverse g commutator g inverse again again etc all these elements are c okay therefore we can say that uh, this commutator uh, set of all uh, commutator or subgroup generated by commutator is a normal subgroup okay so which shows that uh, c is normal so the c is normal uh, in the theorem we need to prove uh, one more uh, characterization uh, if n is a normal subgroup of g then g by n is abelian if and only if okay so if we start with the normal subgroup of g then g by n is abelian if and only if c contained in n that means every commutator is a member of that normal subgroup so we start with uh, a normal subgroup suppose n is normal okay uh, then we need to uh, show that uh, g over n is abelian abelian if and only if c is contained in c is set of all uh, the subgroup generated by 
commutators okay so if this happens uh, we can say that uh, g over n is abelian so next we will prove that one so uh, first we uh, as assume that uh, c is contained in okay first we assume that c is contained in n so assume that assume that c is contained in n okay uh, c is contained in n means n contains all the commutator and the product of commutators okay now we will show that g over n is abelian how will you prove that g over n is abelian we need to consider two uh, distinct uh, cosets of uh, coset of uh, that n uh, we write, we need to prove that uh, g over n is abelian uh, that is an pn these are two arbitrary elements of g over n uh, by definition this is abn abn uh, but we know that uh, n contains all the commutator subgroup so what is the uh, coset containing this element b inverse a inverse b a n if this is uh, an element of the uh, this is a commutator uh, and this commutator is a member of n because our assumption is every commutator is a member of n so the coset containing this is n itself so this n can be replaced by this one so a b and n can be written as this quantity times n b inverse a inverse b a n now using the associative property this will be a b b inverse a inverse that will give identity e b a n okay so that is b a b a n uh, that means b a n is uh, nothing but since n is normal uh, this can be written as b n into a n so in any case we have uh, if we choose any two arbitrary uh, cosets of n uh, or elements of g over n then a n b n is equal to b n a n so this shows that g over n is abelian uh, and the con conversely we assume that g over n is abelian okay. suppose that g over n is abelian to prove c contained in every element of uh, the commutator subgroup uh, is a member of uh, that uh, n itself okay so uh, to prove this uh, we uh, start with uh, our our assumption is this this g over n is abelian so g over n is abelian means a n b n equal to b n a n okay so uh, since this is true for any a and b uh, we can say that uh, this is also true for a inverse b inverse okay so a inverse n this implies a inverse n uh, b inverse n equal to b inverse n a inverse n. so what is the product from the left that is a inverse b inverse n that is equal to b inverse a inverse n okay so these two cosets are same okay by multiplying uh, with uh, b from the left we have b a inverse b inverse n equal to b b inverse a inverse n that implies uh, what is the left uh, left side uh, b a inverse b inverse n so right side becomes this b b inverse is identity that becomes a inverse now you multiply uh, pre multiply with a then that will be a b a inverse b inverse n okay that is equal to a a inverse n that is n itself what is the meaning of this the coset containing a b a inverse b inverse is n itself that means a b a inverse b inverse belongs to n so uh, if we start with any a and b so for any a comma uh, b belongs to uh, g we have a b a inverse b inverse is a member of n this shows that uh, every commutator is a uh, s is that we uh, first we, firstly we defined as set of all commutator this is contained in n since this n is a subgroup and s is a, 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 a commutator a set of all commutators so s contains all the sorry n contains all the powers and products of commutators so obviously c is contained in n so which shows that c is a uh, subgroup of n itself so g by n is abelian then g by n is 
sorry g by n is abelian then c is contained in n c is contained in n we have g over n is abelian so this if n is equal to c this is also true okay so uh, in the textbook this is this in the case when n equal to c is uh, discussed just above this uh, result so this implies g over c is abelian okay so which proves uh, the theorem uh, 15 point uh, 20 uh, now uh, we have some example is given in uh, the textbook so with this we can uh, conclude uh, module 3